fragments are here. Okay. Look, everybody's here. Wow. How are you? What a great crowd. Can everyone hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Don Smith. I'm chairman of the board of Bristol Community College. And on behalf of my fellow trustees, I'd like to welcome you here today. I also want to welcome, acknowledge uh, Governor Patrick, Secretary Ravel, and Commissioner Freeland, and members of our legislative delegation that are here today. On behalf of the trustees, I want to thank all of you for your strong support for this great institution. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to say that, uh, take this opportunity to point out that Bristol Community College is recognized as the fastest growing community college in the state, with the second fastest growing community college in New England, and with the 37th fastest growing community college in the entire United States. So. I am a community college graduate. What I'm most proud of is that BCC has consistently had the highest student retention of any of the other community colleges in the Commonwealth. <laughs> what that means is that we are doing more with less and we are doing it well. Our students are staying to get their degrees and going on to be more productive members of our society I also want to add that community colleges are all about economic development and jobs. So, I must confess that being a trustee around here is easy because we have a president who cares about our students and we, we have a dedicated group of academics, professional and staff who work as a team to get the job done and to make BCC a special place to attend and to be the successful institution that we are. All of these accomplishments start at the top. With that, I would like to introduce Dr. Jack Spraga, president of the finest community college in the Commonwealth, Bristol Community College. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you. Oh, that's very warm, and thank you, uh, Chairman Smith, for your kind words. This is a wonderful day for BCC, and, uh, you know, before I start, I want to uh, recognize our uh, men's basketball team. Are you guys all... Hey! All right. <laughs> They actually just had their training meal. They're getting on a bus for the regional tournament in uh, Springfield, uh, Mass, and they're uh, ranked number two in the in the region. And uh, they had an exciting quarterfinal win uh, the other night uh, here at the in this region. So good luck, fellas, and I uh, wish you all the best, Coach Rob Relalu. Thank you. Your success has really brought uh, Coach Relalu. Would you raise your hand so we can recognize you? Well, to have this success only a, a second short year after we began and launched uh, intercollegiate athletics is really remarkable. We had All-American soccer players, and now we have this great recognition for our men's basketball team. So we wish you well, guys, and uh, I know you'll do, you'll do us proud. Thank you very much. Well, uh, this, as I was saying, it's a great day uh, for BCC. Uh, in this time of uncertainty, it's uh, rare that we get a chance to celebrate good news, and we do have good news. Uh, Chairman Smith me mentioned the enrollment growth. I wanted to uh, point out, and uh, believe me, I love to take all the credit for it, but it involves all of the people uh, who contribute in all of the various activities that they do to make this happen. But since I came here, this is my 10th year, and in those 10 years, enrollment, uh, FTE enrollment at uh, BCC has risen 72%. 72% here at the college. <laughs> and
And it's uh, all about access and opportunity uh, to go with the great quality that we have. We have the best faculty, the best support systems and staff that uh, anyone could ever want. And, uh, and, you know, people vote. I always say, you hear me say all the time, people are voting with their feet and they're coming uh, where the quality is. And I uh, thank you all and the BCC family for all that you do to make that happen. Now, uh, what I'm about to say, I uh, did want to put a little caveat first, uh, and that is that what, what I'm about to say has only to do with Bristol Community College. There's no reflection on any other institution in the <laughs> Commonwealth, all right? They, uh, <laughs> everyone has their own situation, and they must live with, uh, with their budgets and their situation. So uh, we're focusing strictly on uh, Bristol Community College, and that is uh, to do with, uh, this is what fits for BCC. And the governor's budget uh, is uh, just a bold step, uh, a great initiative, uh, and just terrific news for all of public higher education, and we're very proud of his support. It's a strong statement by the governor. Um, you should know uh, that with the uh, stimulus funding uh, that we, uh, Bristol Community College, has an additional $3,641,673 because of what the governor was able to arrange for us. $3,600,000. And I know he had to fight very hard for that last $673 as well. <laughs> Um, so we were looking at a budget at one point of uh, 12.5 million dollars for the college appropriation and because of the governor's work uh, we now have 16.1 so it's a remarkable <laughs> remarkable increase But the governor's support for uh, public higher education, uh, and especially community colleges, uh, predates this budget. It, it goes way back before he even took office. Uh, and he has long been an advocate for uh, community colleges. I know that you will recall, as I uh, always do, the, his uh, uh, proposal about free community colleges. And uh, that, I mean, that is really spectacular. Now, uh, what I always say is whether, it's, whether they're free or not so much at all, and the important thing is that it has the attention of the State House and the attention of the governor about the importance of community colleges, and we're very grateful uh, for that as support. It also fits in with President Barack Obama's uh, uh, support for community colleges. You recall that uh, uh, the president is proposing 12 billion, 12 billion with a B, uh, earmarked, if you will, if you could use that word nowadays, uh, for community colleges. And and uh, that is spectacular around the country. Uh, there are 1,200 community colleges or so, so you can uh, divide it up. I think all, I'd like all 12 billion to come to Bristol, but uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. But whether, again, whether it's 12 billion or 11.9 billion or not so many billion at all, the important thing is that the President of the United States is uh, affirming the importance of community colleges. Uh, I, I'll be kind, I won't point out that the governor predated him with his free uh, community college proposal. But uh, it's very important to have the, have the president and the governor uh, all very much behind us. So uh, the governor has uh, increased uh, the appropriation for community colleges and for all of public higher education. And he also uh, put together an inclusive process uh, with other parts of his team that I'll mention about participating in uh, the leadership of the community colleges in many of the economic development and workforce development projects that will be going on, that has been going on throughout the uh, Commonwealth and will continue to be going on. Uh, so uh, we're very, uh, very uh, much uh, indebted to the governor. Uh, we want to assure him that uh, workforce development and economic development are two of his highest priorities and the community colleges stand ready uh, to fuel the economic recovery and to take uh, a major role in those um, in those recovery projects. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Tim Murray for his great support. He has visited BCC many times. <laughs> 
The Patrick, uh, the Patrick Murray administration is stands uh, staunchly uh, uh, behind uh, education in general and public higher education in particular. We have only to witness the law school uh, uh, event, if you will, uh, to see the great support that is provided. And two other key members, uh, thank goodness, are with us today, and I, I uh, really much appreciate them coming. Uh, we have the Secretary of Education, Paul Revel, Secretary Revel. And we have the Commissioner of Higher Education, uh, Richard Freeland, Dr. Richard Freeland. So you can see with the governor and the lieutenant governor and these two spectacular individuals and their support for education that uh, we have quite, we have assembled quite a powerful group here. And uh, I look forward to continued working with them. Well, uh, the uh, governor always says that making a budget is about making decisions. And uh, it's all about priorities. Uh, you have a, a strong signal now. We all have a strong signal from the governor and his uh, education team in this budget. And I would like to also point out that one of my favorite expressions is uh, that you put your money where your mission is. And uh, the governor has done that. That's what he means by making decisions. A budget making is making decisions. What is important to you? And uh, he has made that statement. We try to make that statement at Bristol Community College. And that leads me to the announcement uh, that we have here today that uh, I want to thank the Board of Trustees for arranging and voting unanimously that there would be no fee increase uh, for FY11 next year. No fee increase. We, uh, it is often said in these times of economic uncertainty that uh, the one thing you do not want to do is uh, balance the budget or try to come out of uh, the uncertainty on the backs of students. And we are making a strong statement now. Uh, Bristol stands uh, seventh or eighth in terms of the uh, most expensive schools of the 15. And uh, that's a list I would want to be on the bottom of. That's one of the only ones. But I would, And I think that we're, with this statement today, that we are headed downward which is the way we want to go. We want to be um, as affordable as possible uh, because that's what we're all about, access and opportunity to quality education. So uh, there is a corollary, however, on this, and that is, uh, well, if we're not going to raise fees, uh, what will happen on the workforce side? Uh, and uh, so it's my pleasure uh, to announce uh, for the third consecutive year amidst fiscal uncertainty, I want to renew the pledge that there will be no layoffs of any employee and uh, FY11. This is not, as I say, uh, that's what I mentioned earlier, we're not uh, comparing ourselves to other institutions. Others have uh, you know, their own situations and they must deal with them. But for Bristol Community College, no fee increase, no layoffs. And I think that's great news for the college and for our BCC family. We want to pull together in hard times. You always pull the family together and stay intact. Uh, this is the third year that we were going to do it. And I want to point out that it is not possible uh, to do this without the governor and his education team building this budget and putting us together. Uh, there is some question, uh, there might be some question of whether it doesn't exactly remain as intact as it is, as the governor proposed, but uh, those, those two pledges uh, remain uh, regardless. We have done the planning and run the numbers and we can do it. So I'm very proud to do it. It's, it's our high priority. You put your money where your mission is and our priority is uh, students and instruction, instructional support, and we want to keep our family together. So uh, I'm very happy uh, to make that announcement today. I thank you all uh, for your, your support as well. We couldn't be doing the wonderful things that we're doing at Bristol uh, without your support. Now it is my pleasure. Uh, uh, I don't know what else I can say about him now to introduce him, but it's my honor and privilege uh, to introduce uh, the governor who has been such a ch staunch champion of uh, education and the Commonwealth. It's not just education. I mean, when you talk about fire and safety and health and all of the myriad things that come across his desk, uh, he has been a great supporter for us and uh, we're very indebted to him. His leadership has been strong and unwavering as he makes those difficult decisions. And 
and it's my honor and uh, privilege to uh, present to you the Governor of the Commonwealth, Deval Patrick. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I hope, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chairman Smythe. Thank you to all the members of the Board of Directors, to all of the members of the legislative delegation who are here today, to Secretary Revel and Commissioner Freeland, and ladies and gentlemen, this is good news. This is good news. And it is great. It's great to be around good news. Because you know, and everybody, I can tell by your nervous laughter, uh, how uh, we have all been dealing with the worst economy in living memory. There isn't a single family or business, large and small, government large and small, that hasn't been touched by this downturn. And it has done a number on people's incomes, their savings, their home equity. It's also done a number on people's heads, if you know what I'm talking about. People are nervous, worried about the future. And I hope what you see from this budget and this announcement is that we, all of us, are doing everything we can to invest in the future that is you here at this community college and education really all across the Commonwealth. You are the future. And as long as we can do what we can to help you do what you do, to give young people and old alike a reason to look up and look forward, then I am quite confident in that future. We are not out of the woods yet, you know that, and I do too. Our work is not done. We have tools, for example, to close the achievement gap in K-12, to but we still have an achievement gap to close. We have done so much good work to build the economy of tomorrow, clean and alternative energy and life sciences and biotech and IT and healthcare and education as its own industry, but we still have an awful lot of people who need to be prepared for those opportunities in that new economy and who need to be put back to work. We have 97.5% of our residents insured with health insurance today, but it's still too expensive. And there's work that has to be done to get that cost down. But in this job and in my life, I know that problems are not solved by the wave of a magic wand. I know that what it takes is putting one foot in front of the other. Small solutions adding up to big solutions. Keeping faith in our future and in each other. And that's what today's announcement is about, and that's what you and I must be about every single day. You can count on me for that. I'm glad to be with you today. Thank you very much. Well, you've heard uh, stirring words from the governor, and uh, it's now my honor to uh, introduce to you the Secretary of Education, Dr. Paul uh, Revel, who has uh, uh, set the tone for not only uh, public higher education, uh, but also all of uh, education. And uh, he has uh, the three commissioners uh, working together and bringing together. Uh, one of the things that first struck me when I first came to Massachusetts were the silos that we have in our world of education. Sometimes we could be our own worst enemy. Uh, and Secretary Revel has gone a long way in removing those barriers and bringing together pathways, uh, smooth sailing, for students to transverse uh, from one level to another. And uh, he's been to Bristol Community College. He's met with faculty, he's met with students and administrators. He's talked to us, he continues to listen, he continues to uh, be interested in uh, speaking with us and visiting uh, Bristol, and this is yet one more occasion for him. So it's my honor to introduce to you uh, Secretary of Education, Dr. Paul Revel. Thank you all very much for that warm welcome. I really appreciate it. And it's so nice to be 
here again. I came last year in a, in a pelting snowstorm, and we have a nice day today, and we have good news to celebrate. Uh, my only problem is I have to follow the governor, which is always a tough act to follow. Uh, and he's, uh, my other grievance with the governor, actually, is that he's done so well by education that now when I go to cabinet meetings, I really have to have body armor or body protection because I've done so well by comparison with other secretariats, which isn't necessarily a good thing for those of us in education because we've had to make cutbacks and sacrifices across the board and we'll still have to make cutbacks and sacrifices within education, but it is an expression of the commitment of this governor uh, to higher education in particular and to education more generally. And that expresses itself not only in the budget, which you've heard so much about today, and in the stimulus funds, and, and you should know that this governor fought long and hard to get the stimulus funds for education into the budget in the first place, but also for this belief that the work that you do here at a community college is absolutely central uh, to the governor's vision, to our vision of the economic future of this commonwealth. Not only are we doing what is right for our students here in terms terms of helping them to uh, make the most of their future, but we're also helping the Massachusetts economy to make the most of itself. Just recently, the governor asked myself, the Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, and the Secretary of Economic Development to form a particular task force and work with the Commissioner of Higher Education to focus on the connection between community colleges and the great work you do here and how we can cultivate and grow jobs with our present and prospective employers in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So we're going to work hard on that given the uh, uh, pressure on the economy right now and the push to grow jobs, community colleges play an absolutely central role to that as you're the gateway to opportunity not only for our students uh, but for the economy more generally. So we look forward to a continuing partnership with you. Uh, I applaud your leadership, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, President Spraga, who always does it with a smile and looks like he says not thank God it's Friday but thank God it's Monday and I can come to work again. Uh, so we're thrilled to work with him. But I want to say in particular we're very appreciative uh, uh, because we know it hasn't been easy times and we know how hard you work. I, as a former uh, higher ed faculty member myself, uh, am in awe of faculty members who teach uh, five courses at a time uh, here at an institution like this. We know how hard you work. We know how hard the staff work, how the other uh, members of the leadership team here work, and we're very appreciative of your patience and your service and, above all, your commitment to students. So thanks very much, and we look forward to working with you. Well, thank you for your kind words, Mr. Secretary. Now, the next speaker is someone that I've had the pleasure with, uh, of working with uh, almost on a weekly basis uh, as uh, we uh, work together uh, to promote not only community colleges in the Commonwealth, but also uh, all of public higher education. And it's my honor uh, uh, to work with him. This year, uh, by coincidence, uh, I happen to be the rotating chair of the, of the Council of Presidents of Community College Presidents. So I have uh, been able to uh, really get up close and personal with, uh, with the commissioner about uh, various activities that are going on throughout the Commonwealth, and it's been a, a real uh, honor for me to work with him. So, uh, I don't think we could have a bigger champion in public higher education than the one we currently have and the one who's here with us today, and I'd like to introduce to you Commissioner Richard Freelan, Dr. Richard Freeland. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, President Sprague and Jack uh, and all uh, my colleagues and friends at uh, Bristol Community College. It's great to be back here. I visited here uh, just a few weeks ago. I well remember that visit, the wonderful uh, dedication of the faculty and the, the energy of the students and just the intensity of the learning environment. It was uh, wonderful to be part of that. And I especially actually remember the lunch uh, because as a number of us have pointed out up here today, this are, these are hard times and so as I've been going around visiting the campuses, you know, they, I, I spend a day and therefore I have a lunch. And the lunch, I have to tell you, is usually on the thin side. It's, you know, a paper plate and maybe half a sandwich and, you know, a little cup of broth or some, something like that. <laughs> no, no drinks, maybe just water. But at Bristol Community College, you have this culinary arts program, right? And I gotta say... <laughs> Yeah. 
I've got to say. Uh, it was the best meal I had this year. So. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody in a white coat over there. <laughs> well, I was raised. Uh, I was raised with the maxim that uh, one good turn deserves another, uh, and I think today is a great illustration of that principle. Uh, the first good deed, of course, uh, is the governor's budget. Uh, we in higher education have gotten used to annual cuts in state support, uh, especially in the recent period, and we anticipated the coming fiscal year, fiscal 2011, with particular dread, because not only were we anticipating another cut from the state, but we were anticipating the loss of federal stimulus money. So our campuses were anticipating something like a 23 percent loss in actual operating dollars. A quarter of the operating budget of an institution like this is just huge, and that's what we were anticipating. So when the governor, far from proposing a cut, proposed steady state funding vis-a-vis -vis last year, and then on top of that said, and in addition to that, we're going to put more federal stimulus money. And so you're going to be at the same level you were in fiscal 09. That was just wonderful and unexpected and thrilling news. And we are so grateful in public higher education for that. So Mr. Governor, I am here on behalf of all of higher education, Bristol Community College and every community college and every state college and the University of Massachusetts and everybody who cares about public higher education in this state to say thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for recognizing that public higher education is a critical priority for the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> and we hope that this is the beginning of a new trend. <laughs> we hope that not just this year, but as we go forward, that we are seeing a time of reinvestment in public higher education that we so desperately need. Uh, and the second good turn uh, is, of course, the response of Bristol Community College to what the governor did. And the decision that President Sprague just announced of the president and the board of trustees to hold student fees level for this year. That is wonderful news in the reception of this audience. Uh, to it is indicative of its importance. All of us in higher education are focused on keeping the cost of college within reach. We have been worried about what has been happening in recent years as student costs have gone up, as state funding has gone down. This decision, not only of the governor to hold state funding level, permitting Bristol Community College to say we're going to hold our fees level, that is another very, very welcome change in pattern. Uh, and Bristol is to be, to be commended for that statement and for that commitment. And not only are they talking about keeping costs down, but they are promising to maintain the quality of the experience as they are doing that. So what, what this event today is saying is that if the state of Massachusetts is ready to support its system of public higher education, that system of public higher education is eagerly ready to maintain our two key commitments of affordable price and quality education for all people in this state. So it's a good news day, and I'm very happy to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Freeland. Uh, you know, we did have quite a lunch uh, from the Chef Corissimo, and uh, I spent the whole morning with the commissioner uh, whining about how uh, we didn't have any money. And he comes out with a flambe dessert, and I said, oh, no. <laughs> I've lost all credibility. <laughs> but uh, he hasn't held it against us, obviously, and we have this wonderful budget. And now, with uh, all respect to everyone, I think the most distinguished person on the dais is about to be speak, and that is our student trustee. Uh, we want to hear from the students. The students uh, have been very... Uh, 
uh, grateful uh, in the time since, in the days since we've uh, made that motion and passed that uh, motion. I, I remember uh, very well in uh, some of the darker moments of fiscal crisis where I had to have a conversation with Michael and say, you know, I'm sorry to say we're looking at perhaps double figure, uh, double digit um, uh, increases. Uh, so the, the, there's just the, this, the uh, dispelling of the clouds uh, uh, through the governor's budget has really made a remarkable effect here at the campus as I move around and speak with the uh, different uh, students. I visited the student senate uh, and also uh, talked with Michael and uh, everybody is so gratified and the, uh, you know the governor should realize well I've had people tell me that with the double digit increase that was projected that uh, might be projected for next year I don't know if I can go to school next year. And if they can't go to a community college, there's not much uh, available for them. So it, it really has made a significant difference. And I know the governor realizes this, but I, th I hope all of you realize the import of what, uh, what has been done with this education team, the commissioner and the secretary, and the lieutenant governor as well. So it's, uh, it is my honor to introduce to you uh, a spokesperson for the students, uh, our student trustee, Michael Hull. Michael? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the student, student body, I want to thank the governor for his budget and your continued support. Thank you. I also want to thank President Sprager for his leadership and his uh, ability to always move us in the right direction. Without uh, his leadership, um, I don't know where we'd be right now. I would also like to thank um, the students and the faculty and the staff for creating such a family here at BCC. You make it uh, enjoyable to come to every day. And we, we rely... <laughs> we rely on the faculty and staff daily to be able to do what we do here at BCC. So I'm thrilled to hear President Sprager say there'll be no layoffs and I look forward to seeing you all here on Monday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the speakers. Um, I just want to acknowledge uh, some of our uh, state delegation in the audience today. Uh, if you could raise your hands or stand when I name you. Uh, Representative Bill Bowles. Representative Stephen Canessa. There he is. Representative Steve D'Amico. Representative Pat Haddad. Representative John Quinn. Representative Michael Rodericks. And Representative Dan Sullivan. I don't think I've missed anybody, and I'd also like to uh, acknowledge some of my fellow trustees. Um, Trustee Tom Murray, Tom, there we go. Trustee Joe Marshall, Joe Mar Trustee Arthur Paul, and Trustee Cynthia Rose from New Bedford. There we go. There we go. That concludes our program. If uh, any of the press has questions for the governor, he'll take them on the side. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.